Now that we know something about torque, uh, it's time to, uh, to start looking at how gravity impacts torque and uh, how gravity causes rotation. And so we know that in order to calculate torque, we need to know uh, the magnitude of that r vector, the position of the force, and the magnitude of the perpendicular part of that uh, force vector. And that gets us the magnitude of the torque. Uh, but for something like gravity, this, this seems like an impossible problem to solve, or a very difficult one anyway, because this force that's acting on it, gravity, that acts on the entire object. So what would our distance be? What would our position of that force be? Well, you're, you're right in thinking that, uh, but we can make assumptions here that will, uh, will simplify our problem-solving process a bit. You may have heard the term center of gravity before. Well, that's something we're going to use here. We can pretend that uh, gravity acts at a single point on any object, and it's going to be at, well, at the center of that object, at least if it's a uniform object. It'll be right at the center. Uniform meaning it's the same density all the way through the object. So in, uh, in this problem, let's look at uh, an example of a ramp that leads up to a truck and how much torque we have um, on that ramp due to gravity. So we've got the mass of that ramp is 35 kilograms, the total length of the ramp is 3.0 meters, and it makes a 20 degree angle when it's extended. So I'm going to treat gravity as though it acts at just a single point right here in the middle of that ramp. And then this little symbol, the circle that's divided into fourths and uh, diagonal quadrants are colored in, that's usually used to denote uh, center of gravity. And so that's going to be the location for my force from gravity. And that's going to be, of course, straight down. So that would be weight, which is equal to mg. And then if we look at, uh, at the diagram up here, we can see that there's some point right here where that, uh, uh, where that ramp is attached, so we'll use that as our center of rotation. So I suppose I should have been more clear here. I should have stated what's the torque caused by gravity about this point right here, this uh, connection where the, the ramp attaches to the truck. Um, because it would be a different answer if we looked at, say, the point where it touches the ground. So we need to, uh, to fill in our two vectors then. We have our weight vector already. We also need our displacement vector or our position vector for that force. So this is going to be R. And that's going to have a magnitude of, well, it's halfway along this, uh, this ramp. So it would be 1.5 meters away from that point of rotation. Okay, so to get the magnitude now uh, of the torque, we're going to multiply this 1.5 meters times the perpendicular component of this weight force. So we have some component that goes perpendicular to our R vector. There it is. And then I can fill in the rest here. That part doesn't do anything for us. So this will be the perpendicular part of our weight. All right, and that's a right angle there. Now to get to the uh, magnitude for torque, we're going to do 1.5 meters. That's the magnitude of the r vector. Times, let's see, that'd be, uh, this must be a 20 degree angle right here. So the force there would be mass times gravity. Uh, acceleration of gravity times, let's see, that must be the cosine of 20 degrees. So the magnitude for torque then is going to be 1.5 meters times, what do we say, 35 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared times the cosine of 20 degrees and the magnitude for torque then is equal to, well, let's calculate that, 1.5 times 35 times 9.8 times the cosine of 20. 
and we get 483, and the units on that are Newton meters. Now we also need to figure out which direction that uh, that torque is going to be in. It's going to cause rotation in the clockwise direction. And so one thing we can do with this is a modified version of the, the right hand rule. If you curl your fingers on your right hand in the direction of rotation, your thumb will point in the, uh, the direction of the torque. Um, so if I curl my fingers around, the only way that I can uh, make that work so it shows rotation in the clockwise direction is if my torque points in toward the page. Now, you can do the other uh, version of this as well. You can uh, point your index finger in the direction of R, your middle finger in the direction of W, and again, the only way to make that work is if you have your hand positioned so your thumb is pointing downward into the page. So I'm going to put uh, my direction is into the page, or another way to write that would be 483 Newton meters, and then show it like this. Or I could write 483 Newton meters clockwise. Or a final version, since typically we'll say clockwise is negative and counterclockwise is positive when we're looking at these two-dimensional drawings, we could just call that negative 483 Newton meters for the torque caused by gravity on this ramp.